starting off, what did you think of this episode? Like, I, was, I actually saw quite a few people talking about like sort of what's like what's like the episode ranking so far. Mm-hmm. People say like sort of putting episode two still at like the number one one. I think. Mm. Oh, I think I, I think this one might be my favorite though. I think um, this one was my favorite too. This one was a lot more funnier than the other two, in my opinion. This one was so funny. I couldn't stop laughing. I think, like, I'd say that, um, yeah, I, it's, like, they definitely had, like, a little more of a, like, this is sort of a lot more of the comedy sort of aspect for a lot of it. And then, like, but having that be an episode be almost entirely comedy throughout is then, like, to get the juxtaposition to that, that end sequence. So, yeah. That was perfect. Perfect. Think, yeah, but, like, talking about funniness, I think some of the, the first two episodes and, like, seeing some of, like, Paul doing the comedy that um that was sort of like those are sort of my, my favorite so far still yeah I don't know it suited him well like the 60s yeah. 70s sort of vibe that suited him yeah. really well in that time period I think this one was Elizabeth's episode I think yeah, well I think Paul did really well too especially with the breathing technique and even just <laughs> that whole like oh that whole sequence where it's just all the like the powers go all weird and then both of them are just like <laughs> like that was perfect I absolutely loved it and just yeah again like it's so surprising that it's so funny like and even just Paul and Elizabeth like there's such like like even especially when we look at like the other Marvel movies that they've done and even other movies they've done they're such serious like drama actors but they're so funny it's just yeah it just shows a different side to them and I hope that they do more comedy in the future because it just shows that they're really good at what they do yeah it feels like um um I think, like, look, just looking at, like, well, some of the upcoming MCU projects seems like they're going to be going to that sort of, like, mm. that sort of vibe a little bit more of, like, less because, like, the thing about, like, the typical MCU film is sort of, like, you know, like, sort of mid-level sort of serious stakes mm. and then, like, like sort of, like, good degree of, like, sort of, like, jokes and quips. Throughout. Yeah. But I think, like, One Division is sort of setting up more of the idea of having something that's, like, this sort of extreme contrast of, like, majority comedy, but then this, like, really, like, intense sort of, like, you know, deadly serious stuff i think that's what the loki series is going to be like yeah i think yeah i think the loki series and this series will have a lot in common in terms of comedy because even with that trailer i remember watching it i was just like what the frick is going on and i was like this is exactly what happened with one division when i watched it because i was like what it's going on with one division this is not what i expected i thought like when i, I remember when they said one division like series coming out i was like oh it's going to be so serious it's going to be dark and scary and blah 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 completely different to what i expected obviously there is some scary aspects that we will jump into later but um it's just completely like like the opposite of what i expected and just either way i'm just enjoying it for what it is and just hmm, i just hope as well with loki that it's also on par with this and i'm excited for that series but eh, another time to talk about that but um again just the whole like i don't know the pregnancy comedy got me hard especially when the water broke i was like please don't be that that's her water breaking and it was and i just cracked up i couldn't stop laughing it's just so good oh it's just so good and the whole like even with the whole contraction bit that whole thing i was so tense i was just like just right. every second of like when like um what's her name um Geraldine every time she like moved and stuff I was like please don't look at the bird please don't look at this please don't look at that that was perfect great like keeping up with tension in those beats um but oh just again this episode like that whole ending we need to unpack because oh, it's, there's so much to talk about but what else did you enjoy about this episode before we get to that I'd say that um because, like, I mean, I've, I've loved, the, like, this, the cinematography of the show so Ooh, far. Oh, like, yeah. Not just, it's not not just, like, at how well it's, like, you know, recreating all of the traditional styles, but just, like, it's just so good altogether. <laughs> so and good. This one, like, I'd say I, this one visually I enjoyed even more than the previous two just because, like, having this sort of, like, kind of low-stock film grain that they have that it's, like, yeah. got with, of, like, it's just, like, that. it just looks so great. And, and like, even yeah. the bright colour. It's just yeah. so nice to see some really bright colors. Yeah. And like, just like, there's just this particular sort of way of like how the color, what the color balance is like, and how these sort of mm-hmm. like the way that just everything looks that just, you know, it's just like such a beautiful feel. And yeah. Like, I've always loved the sort of like, um, the 1970s sort of aesthetic of like, with like lots of films of that era, lots of like album covers from yeah. that era and so on. It's just like, it's, I'm just always a big fan of the sort of like, you know, 1970s sort of you know 
visual style and the visual aesthetic and like that just looks so good about all of this and they like replicate it brilliantly there's just so many different like individual shots that just like they just absolutely stunning of just, yeah like, just a close-up on someone and like just the way that like the depth of field looks the way that you know the framing is it's just like just all looks so i reckon we're, we're gonna we're gonna be in the 80s in the next one yeah because like, she like, had like the curly hair yeah I yeah saw, um, uh because a lot of people have been like sort of theorizing of like okay so like what's the how many different eras are we going to see are we going yeah. to see six are they, we going to see seven or eight mm. or something because there's been some people saying it'll just be 50s to 90s and then modern it was like mm. sort of like the sixth one there's some people saying it could be eight if we go 2000s 2010s 2020s i thought well, that's long I think, yeah and like 2020s it's like i feel like it, it's it's only been this decade for two years now it's like yeah there isn't really a a the sitcom style of this mm. year to really show yeah and not so really like, and besides like it's set in the 2020s you know it's like i mean 2025 because of, yeah like, you know when my like, game's on but it's like yeah. it's still like that is the present day in here so that would be stepping away from like the whole showing these different times of like sort of like, nostalgic aspects and so on yeah but i'm thinking it's going to be seven decades we go 50s Ooh. 60s 70s 80s 90s 2000s and 2010s mm, yeah because there is not nine episodes isn't there there's the nine episodes all together yeah and okay. there'll be two two episodes are like then will just be like apart from all of that and like yeah I'm sort of like just really exploring more of the sort of multiverse stuff or like all mm. everything else going on with the sword but yeah i reckon yeah next one we're, we're, we're going to see the kids grow up through the show I yeah think. i think in the next episode because i remember from the trailer i think they're still babies because i remember they, were, they had the cots so either they're babies or they're like toddlers yeah yeah so that's what I remember from the trailer because if it is the eighties, it probably is the eighties episode. They're toddlers because I remember there was a scene from the trailer, from the first ever trailer we got, which was like ages ago. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Obviously, in the next episode, twenty tens. I don't think they'll be like aging a decade with each one. Oh no! It's like yeah, that it's like that would be like mm. yeah, yeah. Like, and besides, like Tommy and Billy are usually depicted as being like about eighteen in most of the comics usually oh uh, yeah so like they're yeah, yeah they'll grow like a little bit through each one mm. and like yeah but, and who knows they might come up in the movies later maybe i wouldn't be surprised at all yeah i wouldn't be surprised either yeah. since they have brought them up in the show there has to be a reason why they're bringing them up well let's get on to the really like important well not important part of the episode that i think everybody's just glued to because it was so like well done the ending yeah. just that whole last part was so well done and just because oh, yeah. throughout the episode you thought there were oh wait actually before we do that there's what that one well actually there's a few things that combine to this one but the whole thing with vision oh, and right. him seeing like all the um little kinks in the world he was seeing like all the stuff going wrong with wow. herb and then noticing the dinner and stuff and then that rewind like, it wasn't even, like, a yeah. big deal, but just the fact that it happened, just, like, ah, oh, it was yeah. so, like, well done. But it also just sent, like, chills down your spine because it was just, like, oh, God, like, yeah. she's she's doing this. And also with the ending, just before we jump into talking about the ending, I actually, like, got an idea of what might be happening. I don't know. This is a theory with no, like, real, like, evidence to it. <laughs> I was thinking, especially because we spoke about it last week in terms of M Mephisto and the possibilities of him coming into the MCU. And from what I've seen on the internet, a lot of people are seeing like the 666 numbers around and stuff. So yeah. I was thinking- the hexagons as well. Six. Yeah, and the hexagons because yeah. six. Yeah. So I was thinking maybe Wanda made a deal with Mephisto to create another world. I wrote this down so I wouldn't <laughs> forget. Um, she made another world where she can control the reality however the effects of this also come with um causing her to be uh, more obsessed with the perfection of what this reality is and also be allow her powers to become more uncontrollable and unstable which leads to that maybe affecting reality in the real world so that's what i was thinking maybe that might be the whole thing of <clears throat> how that leads to maybe dr strange and then the whole spider-man thing but um that's what that was like a theory I thought of just last night and I thought like I'd bring it up because like I really want the whole Mephisto thing to be true because like yeah. he's so cool and just like he's and also because they said they're bringing like Do the Doctor Strange 2 is going to be darker and like scarier 
And it was like, the only person who's that scary is Mephisto. Like I haven't been scared of him since I was a kid and I really want to see him on screen. But um, yeah, that's just the theory I had with the whole ending that we saw and also just throughout the episode and everything we've seen so far. I might be wrong, but I thought I'd bring it up and just talk about it for a bit. It's definitely the the one thing that like um uh, my read on the series and like sort of what's going on at the moment in the world that um has like changed a lot between episodes two and three like up until episode three i was kind of thinking that is vision like is he actually a person in here or is mm. he just like this construct of yeah wanda's perfect husband and stuff mm, yeah he's created in this in this real that's been created in this reality but then it's sort of it's looking more and more like he is really here and so yeah it's actually him yeah yeah and like he's one of the he's he's a victim of this world he's so like Mm, he's trapped in here and he's starting to see the the phrase in reality that yeah wanda is actively hiding because she doesn't because she wants to keep this reality. yeah and she wants this perfect image Yeah. yeah Yeah, and especially we saw that in the ending, like how scary she turned, just like what know, what you yeah. say, and I was like, oh yeah. god, and then she just like, oh, she went home, dear, she had to rush home. I was like, oh my Jesus Lord, oh, she's scary. <laughs> that's like, yeah, that's the first moment where Wanda's willfully like sort of seen past the facade of everything was yeah. about Pietro then. Yeah. But like, and it's like because it's like it is this, it's so like it just kind of suggest the idea a little more of like that you know it's like it's like you know one of the idea of like a kid's here this like this is taking a little bit of like this is like for her this is this is more than just this sort of like perfect world it's like it's something mm. to like bring her back to like thinking about the real world as well. yeah and like sort of and reminisce like, on that too yeah yeah, and yeah. Like, this is a world without this is like yeah this is the her perfect world of just like her vision with her kids but then it's like but in the real world that's where she had all these memories of pietro mm-hmm. yeah and also then makes me think of like do we do we think that we will see um will she try and if she brought vision back to be a part of this if she could bring vision back to be a part of this world when he was dead yeah do the same with pietro then mm. that's why i wonder why she hasn't done it yet if it is going to happen yeah. because even i was thinking i don't know because I thought the deal with Mephisto may be a big thing to ask about, even just a new reality. But, like, to yeah. ask also for Vision back, I'm not sure. Like, I'm not sure if her powers are capable of doing that, but if she maybe asked for Mephisto to bring him back and then create this realm where she's able to just do her own thing, um, I'm not sure if that's possible, but I think anything's possible with the stories that they're doing at the moment. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how like even just with vision like what else he does because i think even in this in that ending he like i don't know i think he may have felt like something was wrong especially not only with the whole geraldine thing but like with just even when he came inside and he was like looking around because he knows that geraldine doesn't actually have a horror so it was like yeah hmm. so that's gonna be interesting to see if he actually addresses that next episode i think um I was just picturing this sort of the idea of like say yeah Pietro just walks in the door in like, oh. the next episode or something at some point oh that would be um, cool it's like I was I've imagined like a sort of a bit of a sequence of where Vision's almost actively fighting against Wanda's rewinds and resets here and there of like he's sort of he's coming in he's so like is it first shock like but y- y- but you died you know you died yeah I, 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 it's like I you know, I I know that that happened. You know, it's like this is less sort of because it's like I imagine like just the way it is for Vision at the moment. It's like he will probably have to remember that he died at some point. And I think but he will. Like, yeah, like, I think yeah. he will soon. Yeah, because yeah. we did see that in a really like, short trailer that happened a few months ago before that long trailer that came out. Mm. But I think like just having this moment of where he's sort of like he sees Pietro and he's sort of like you know. Mm. first wanda resets it and then it's sort of like things go on he's realizes again and she has to reset again or something like oh that'll be that'll be interesting to see if she has to reset it like more than once yeah that'll be that'll be interesting there was the one theory i saw someone had i put something like so they said that um so there's all the rumors about um evan peters potentially being Mm. used as well and like yeah some people are saying that 
he'll be he'll be playing Mephisto. Some people are saying that you know Ooh. he could be playing he could be playing his Quicksilver from you know the X Men movies. Mm. But then, and like honestly, I wouldn't be surprised at this point if he does. Or if he yeah, playing both of them. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but then I saw someone had the theory of something like is that Uncle Pietro turns up, but then something happens and it's sort of like almost like treated half as a gag and half as this really sort of like shocking serious sort of th- moment Ooh. of he gets recast in the way of like what well, could was well, like you know also referencing stuff like you know, Fresh <laughs> Prince of Bel-Air and so on of like oh yes you know, uncle character every now and then being like sort of recast that sort of thing yeah and it's like okay so yeah it's Aaron Taylor Johnson at first and then he's like he goes away and comes back and it's Evan Peters and we act like it's all Ooh. in the show then and like I see that could happen. Yeah, yeah. I see what you I mean. Back, or if they, they could do it. They had. They could go back and forth between the two of them. They could like sort of have it the other way around or mm. something. But I, either way, I just think that it'd be like a really fun sort of. It'd be a really fun way to have the kind of like the sort of reality being like you know, being like warped and contorted in this mm. like weird way also be a nice little reference to like sort of the multiverse and like to you know the other like the yeah others in like films and then also it would just be like a, it'd be a fun reference to like different sitcoms of the era well. oh definitely yeah but i think yeah i um i will we'll see i guess there's plenty of i reckon we're getting closer and closer to like you know this like more stops going things are going to ramp up with each episode it's like yeah and i mean longer. this episode ramped up a lot even though it was like only like a two minute scene boom the tension went up and it was like yeah damn like they did it so well like i can't emphasize that enough like just that little bump up in the tension and then rising 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 and you're just like left on that cliffhanger i loved it it's so so good and just like oh like, I think a lot more people are starting to come on, especially with the reception of the crowds. Like, everyone's loving it. Again, like we said last week, like, it's amazing to see that people jumped on. But even this week, like, seeing the amount of support the show is getting, it's, like, good. Because I was so worried about, like, yeah, especially just with the criticism it might get for being so different from the original formula. But I'm glad that it's, like, gotten so positive. Because for me, like... I was sort of getting sick of the old formula of movies we were getting. So I was hoping like, yeah. give it a revamp, give it like some, a, a breath of fresh air. So it's a little bit nice to come back to. Um, and already I'm sucked in again and I can't wait for the, like the other shows that are coming, but even with just one division, I think, yeah, again, the drama and the hype is going to build every single episode that we're going to get in the next few weeks yeah. until uh, the climatic acting ending for whatever that's going to be. I got like, it's like an interesting thought I had about with um the whole sequence with Herb and Agnes. And mm. Herb, I think Herb's very much a victim. He's like mm-hmm. someone who's caught up in all of this and like yeah. he's trying to escape in his own way. But like, you know, just the way that the reality around Wanda is sort of like kind of trying to protect itself and trying mm. to stay stable yeah. and so on. I think it's like the bit when, like, when he was cutting through Vision's um, fence, I think that was, like, he's trying to get out. Yeah. Oh, that's a good way to look at it. Yeah. That's I was just terrified. That was just reminding me yeah. of so many horror movies. I was like, ah, no, yeah. I'm out. <laughs> but then it's almost like, with Agnes, it's almost like she's trying She's trying to keep things, like, stable as well. She's, yeah, keep the equilibrium of this mm. world and keep it, like, you know, keep the facade intact. Mm. And it's almost like she's, she's, like, you know, almost against against her her better judgment is trying to keep it stable like she is sort of like it's like it's almost like she's got like the thought of it would be easier to like sort of to break out of here and to let things or fall down but no i have to keep it stable i have mm. to keep things together yeah keep things as and normal as possible and we've still got the mystery of ralph and like still yes i don't know anything about you know exactly but uh, yeah, I wonder if that's going to, maybe that, like, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, because I feel like Mephisto is going to show up, but it might not be in the form that we, like, think it's going to be, and this is the thing, I need to look it up, I'm not yeah. sure if it is, if he shapeshifts or anything, because if he does, that'll be interesting if he does, I'm not sure if he does, though, so, if, if it, if he does, it'll work 
in the favor of like him maybe being Ralph. And then at the end, maybe he like morphs and all we see is like the silhouette or something. Like, I feel like that would be yeah. so cool to show just like that hint and then boom, it's gone. Ah, oh, that would be so cool. Da, da, da. Powers, <laughs> Speed running. Abilities. Da, da, da. Shape shifting. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, he can. Sh yeah, he okay, can he can shape shift. Okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then he might be in the show. Then, it, oh, it might. Oh, who's that girl again that you said was? With I was her? thinking, who's you know, the girl who's with Herb? Who's that girl? What's her name again? Uh, Agnes. What if that's Mephisto? I was actually gonna say, of like, I think, what if, what if they're setting up the whole thing's like Ralph's just a red herring, you know? It's like, yeah. It's just like, Keep think, get everybody thinking. Okay, who's Ralph? Who's Ralph? Is Ralph? Yeah, who's Agnes? Ralph? He's gonna be important. Oh, no, yeah. Oh. No, 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 it's Agnes. You know, no, yeah. It's her. You know. What if it's actually her? Especially if she's saying like, yeah. "Keep it normal. This is normal." Oh yeah. my God! What if it actually is her? Oh, yeah. that would be and, like, so cool. Thing, and having the whole thing about Ralph is like, yeah, he's he's literally just a red herring. He's a distraction. It's, mm. like we're it's a to ruse. Him. Yeah. Yeah. He's like. It's not even that he's not, he doesn't even exist. He isn't even a real person. He's yeah. just this idea. She keeps like, she just talks about her husband all the time. Because she brings like, him up like time. every 10 minutes. Oh, yeah. In the first two episodes. So it's yeah. like, mm. Yeah. And I think like, it's like this sort of, like a, like the bait, pulling the bait and switch like that. I think that's like, that'd be like, that, that just sounds like something that the writers of this would do. Oh my God. It might be. Imagine, okay. This is something we need to, like keep in mind then because this might actually be a thing so yeah. <laughs> now i'm excited because now i want to know if she's actually the villain oh yeah. that would be cool they'll probably like it's like they they like they they like set it up so much they talked about him so much to like get everybody talking yeah. about and thinking about ralph and so like on. that's what everyone's gonna, been talking about as well on twitter it'll come up in the show as well like some at some point like vision's going to sort of think about ralph or someone will ask further about ralph because it's almost like, it's like the sort of thing where she talks about him enough that it becomes sort of mundane. It's something that's yeah, like it's like oh uh, okay. It's like yeah, okay. Hearing about Ralph again. Nobody's going to ask about Ralph. Nobody's mm. going to ask her about Ralph because yeah. she talks about him all the time. But then someone will, and then and then she'll have to answer. Curious. And then everyone will think, all right, we're gonna find out who Ralph is, and then we find yeah. out, and then it's nobody. Uh, yeah. And, it's that, and then she's. It's, she might be the villain yeah it's, it's a distraction it's just get everybody thinking about someone else rather mm. than because i feel like there has to be some big twist yeah. to it to reveal like whether it's mephisto or whatever is like this force that's like having like a play in wonders like world of reality or whoever's helped to create this reality like oh it's gonna be a great unveiling because just like ah it's so intense already it's just like when it happens it's gonna be like oh my god because um I know there's there's some one theory someone had about mm -hmm. um and she's a character I honestly don't really know that much about but there's yeah. a character um Agatha Harkness. Oh, she sounds familiar. Yeah. What does she do? Marvel character, one of um oh one of Wanda's main villains from the comics. Ooh. And like there's there's a theory going that that's who Agnes is. Oh, like, maybe maybe we got it wrong with Mephisto. What's what does she do? Agnes has been depicted as one of the original witches from the Salem Witch Trials. She somehow survived and later became a significant figure in the novel continuity. Um, she played a mentor oh. in real magic. Oh, so I think she might be in Wolverine comics as well. I think I've seen her before. She wears, yeah. She sort of matches Agnes's description as well. Yeah. Oh, it might be. Because she was, um, yeah, it's like that... Basically, it sounds like um, that's sort of the role that that uh, Doctor Strange is going to have in Doctor Strange Two, of like being the mm. one to teach Wanda about real magic. And ah. the less, of course, is that this whole thing is like she's already learnt some real magic. Yeah, she. she oh, maybe out, she sought out or was found by Agatha Harkness, who then taught her how to create this world or something. It's like I don't know. Yeah, and they'll have to be defeated by another sorcerer, namely the Sorcerer Supreme. Mm-hmm. But oh, exactly. Who knows? Who knows? Mm -hmm. I really want the Mephisto theory to be true though. I really want Mephisto with the Marvel universe. Whoa. 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 Uh, says that uh sorry, I was just like reading some of the things said. Yeah, one of the main <laughs> stories about um one of the main stories that Agatha turned up in 
Um, Agatha resurfaced alive and well when Wanda's infant children began exhibiting odd behavior and Wanda became unstable. Um, and blah, blah, blah. Mephisto claimed that Scarlet Witch's children are actually fragments of his own soul. And then that he had created them because she she wanted, like, she wanted Vision had died, she wanted kids. <gasps> oh, no! Kids did we her. just unveil the whole plot? <laughs> I don't think we did. Oh, no! <laughs> but then Agatha came along to, like, Agatha <laughs> Mind White. Radiant, stop radiant, stop yeah. radiant, stop radiant! Yeah. I don't know if it's like, yeah, but I don't <laughs> Holy shit. Oh okay. no, we may have stumbled across the action spotlight. <laughs> oh, save that, save that link though, just in case. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. Oh, we might be onto something then. Yeah. I'm excited though. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. But she's an old lady. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, it's like, well, I mean, like, you know, just like. She's a witch as well as like she's supposed to be. Oh, like, true that. Like, oh, maybe they got another actress to play the older version. Maybe. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh god. Stop looking! Stop looking! Sorry. Yeah, I thought I told I, I completely forgot about that. It was a thing from one of the trailers as well. It's like. Oh no! Stop! Uh, <laughs> Don't spoil it for yourself. Yeah. I, I see why people are talking about Agatha Harkness though. Now. Mm. Oh, okay. So, like, yeah. It's like um. Cause you know the the you've seen the bits of like when they're in the Halloween costumes at one point. Oh yes. The two thousands episode is what people are talking mm -hmm. about is. I think yeah. Like, yeah. Vision's in his classic costume, Wanda's yeah. in his classic costume. And Agnes is dressed as a witch, and she's like wearing like a one of those. Classic no! Costumes. Oh no! It actually right. is her then. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All of the theories aside, I think that yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. I, then we. All of that. Like, I didn't see. I'd seen like people saying. I see people just like randomly talking about Agatha Harkness. So, like, oh, what's her deal? What's the thing about her? And then. It's, oh, okay. Oh, okay, then. okay. All right. I see what everybody means now. It's okay. Like, now we okay. understand. All right. So All right. yeah. Okay. okay. I think she is Agne uh, Agatha. <laughs> and then yeah. I feel like Mephisto will s pop up somewhere. Yeah. Whether it's Ralph or some yeah. random ass character, it's gonna. He's gonna pop up. Yeah. Yeah, because I know that some some people had like said the thing be beforehand of like um just like what we'd seen of Agnes in the trailers and like oh also just the name of Celeste mm, yeah as well and like um some people I think it was something like um some people had like compared her to like and like her relation to like Wonder and how she like how they're still connected in the show is mm -hmm. like sort of kind of like with um uh Endora in Bewitched. Like, so oh yes sort of like the, that's essentially what agatha and wonder's relationship oh. is like in the comics so like this sort of like yeah. this like other sort of like mentor and like you know yeah mentorship witchcraft figure and so on mm. but it's like it's like oh okay okay <laughs> it's like this, <laughs> it seems pretty it's concrete like, there's literally so many different things it could be or it could be all oh it could be once. yeah that's the thing it could be i mean it is multiverse yeah. So yeah. they could go, as, as, and like you said last week, they can go as crazy as they want. They can take this exactly. wherever the hell they want. So yeah. <laughs> we're just here for the ride. Because like, as, I mean, like even just like the, the simple thing that, um, like even just like, there's just the name dropping of Pietro and Ultron. It's like, as Mitra's yes. friends, like, you know, it's been how long since we've seen any mention of them in the MCU. It's been so long. And, like, I wouldn't be surprised if we get James pa James Spader back in some form, possibly oh, in one division. If he comes back, yeah. that would be because he's such a great actor. He's yeah. so good in voice acting as well and everything oh, yeah. he did with Ultron. Yeah. Amazing. So like if they got him back on the show, I'd be like, hm, sweet, yeah. nice. <laughs> Cause someone had the someone had the theory as well of like, um, like part of the thing that we've seen through the show so far is like Wanda is, she's not just like created her family; she is building her yeah. family, right? Yeah. So first of all, it started with them like moving in. Like by the end of the first episode, like you know they had had their rings, had their song, you know that sort whole sort of thing. Yeah. Sort of like established as a sort of like you know classical married couple and so on. Yeah. Through the second episode, um, they're sort of like just trying to like, you know, just become like sort of just more like you know lead to everybody else in the town like so the it's like i mean like they're just like going through like sort of much faster obviously they're going through like all this sort of, like you know this sort of story of like you know this couple moving into town you know like so like they just got married yeah. and then, like then they you know got to know all their neighbors you know so like that's what the second episode is all about now they've got the kids and then it's like you know what's gonna happen next like we're gonna have more of a family kind of built out it's like we've got yeah. like, mention of the kid's uncle 
Yeah. So maybe next episode we might get him. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like I know that someone said like just imagine if just if one episode is yeah knock at the door, um knock at the door, and then yeah Wanda goes and opens it. Vision is still, like just looking from like lounge room, and then she says oh Vision it's your father, and then James just walks in. Yeah. And it's like just like just human James, you know, yeah. just, like, you know, just like comes in and it's like, oh yeah, it's Vision's dad, you know. And then that'll be interesting, yeah. I'd love that. And even again, we we did say it's a possibility if they were going that like extreme, crazy multiverse sort of thing. Magneto. Yeah. They could go with Ian McKellen, but like yeah. at the same time, I mean, like that would be extremely amazing if it happened. <laughs> I mean, anything's possible. And especially because you brought up the fact that this is obviously based off one of the biggest comics for Wanda and that yeah. she, in that comic, plenty she builds, yeah, and plenty. Like she yeah. builds her family out for this perfect reality. Yeah. It could be. Too- and then there's the House of M story where she sort of like creates this sort of like ultimate, yeah. like, you know, mutant leadership sort of thing, you know, of like with, you know, Magneto in charge. But I'm thinking like with. Com- combine all those stories together and have this sort of like she creates this sort of nuclear family of yeah. uh, herself a vision of her kids her uncle her brother um her father vision's father and you know just sort of you know creates this you know that tries to like sort of bring everything together but then it just like it just gets more more fractious as it mm. goes on and even more it's unstable it's like it's yeah like, you know, yeah exactly it's harder to sustain all of that as you know as it starts to get more complicated and more, mm. you know, like, like one, like, like Ultron killed, Ultron killed Pietro and like something like that of like, just bringing in that sort of thing of like, you know, vision realizing that and trying mm. to, you know, present that to her, that like, you know, this is, he, you know, he was dead. Yeah. And sort of like, I'm just imagining like, sort of like, like for some of the other dark comedy they've had the show so far of something. <laughs> Just thinking so like if there's like a big family dinner or something and at one point at one point Ultron just like you know just he's got a glass of wine accidentally spills it across Pietro's shirt or something it's like oh <laughs> it's like oh no you know uh, <laughs> oh that would be great that actually would be such yeah. dark comedy and I love it that yeah. they're including it too like so much in the vein of like all the rest of the show too it's like yeah know, it it's great like, yeah because we saw that yeah that could happen yeah exactly i would love um, to actually see that that would be great um let's talk about the hydra soak the, yes like the, i was going to bring that up too um, advertisement today yeah so there was um uh i saw this one thing like people talking about it could be a very very major reference to agents of shield something oh like how it's like i think it's from one of the later seasons someone's just sharing an image of this, this mm-hmm. scene talking about a talking about this blue hydra soap that makes that like makes you forget about everything and sort of like you know think you're in a magical oh, place etc yeah it's like maybe but like this is called hydra soak yeah it's hydra soak, soak. And yeah and also this is all about the main line about um letting out the goddess inside you and then it's like uh, i was probably really yeah. talking about got, well loki scepter that had that was blue in the middle oh yes hydra used loki scepter to unleash wonder's powers oh yes that's uh, a good one yeah because there's the, there's the one thing I've seen people talking about of like what they might do of like just a really really simple little, not even really a retcon, more just like sort of elaborating further on this sort of thing, that uh, Pietro and Wanda's powers weren't really they didn't get their powers from the Mind Stone. Their powers were activated by the Mind Stone. Ooh. So they have the idea of like sort of like latent mutant powers. Mm. That sort oh, of that would be good like, because yeah, even when yeah. I, I remember. When first found out that it was like apparently from the Mind Stone, I was like, oh. yeah. I don't know how I feel about it's that like because it's... I'm such a big X-Men fan. So I was like, nah, yeah. okay, I'll just let it slide because MCU. But if it was yeah. just activated, that'll make me a little bit happier. <laughs> yeah. And then it's sort of um and so it's like, yeah, it's kind of like that. If that if that is where they're going, like that's kind of like what it's like it's because I said, you know, like um un- releasing the goddess inside, you know, mm-hmm. it's like releasing not creating yeah it's exactly like, yeah and also just the idea of like yeah wanda and pietro both like already having the inherent potential for those powers yeah you know? and then like but it's just like it just takes something to release it you know and then, that's very true yeah but yeah um 
and then I be, I know there's the big theory everybody's talk um um talking about a lot of the some of the ways that this is sort of relating to the kind of House of M storyline. It was um the reason there was such a big event in the comics is because at the end of that, um, when that whole reality was then torn down, Wanda, in doing so, also erased the powers of ninety eight percent of the mutants in the world. Oh, <gasps> there's a lot of people think. Oh yeah, go. she did. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of people think, oh, they could go the other way around. Mm. This. Having it instead, she activates the powers of a whole bunch of mutants. <gasps> and it's like, that, oh, that would be that great. Is cool th- yeah, that is a cool theory, but I always feel like it's part of the thing with mutants that always works best with them from a story perspective. The idea they've been around for a few decades mm. and so on. Yeah, and so like they didn't, they haven't just. I mean, like it's suddenly part, of, part yeah. of the whole social commentary issue of them that it's like you know it's sort of the way a lot of. Um, um sort of like you know um regressive views of like sort of like different sort of like um um social minorities and archetypes and so on of like oh they're just cropped up in the last few de- in the last few years or so like no it's yeah just, they've been around for years it's just the society hasn't recognized them yeah it's like that's something that you can do with mutants that is like you know it's like, yeah it works best in the idea of like um because like apocalypse and so on has been around since ancient yeah Egypt. and like obviously it, there's like mutants have been rarer since then but it's just only in like it's often what they say it's like um because of nuclear testing in the 1940s that sort of like led to mm, yeah to mutants being, like, yeah sort of a little bit more and that's then when they really started to become more well known just out as well with like the globalization um through the late 20th century becoming mm. like people got to learn about them more of like you know that sort of thing but it's like i because like they could do that and that could be a really simple way of setting up mutants in the mcu of having mm. it that wanda activates all their powers yeah but it takes away a lot from what mutants yeah it mean. does and so on so but then it's one of those sorts of things of like I, it's like okay what way would they how would they actually get it to work and like what's a good way they can mm. do it then again of course there is the whole multiverse aspect of that could just say that all right there's like it's actually like another earth just a date adjacent to this one that's mm, like that's yeah. where all the mutants are you know that isn't necessarily where all of the x-men films take place mm. and it's like they already had this kind of like sort of flexible approach to the sort of like multiversity of them and ultimate yeah that control. could work too yeah the stuff that's set up in like logan and deadpool and mm. you know um x-men origins wolverine and so yeah on. and so having an that sort of thing like yeah all the, all the mutants are here but they're just like in a kind of slightly alternate timeline just yeah there's like there's a world where there are mutants there's a world where there aren't and that sort of thing you know yeah could even reference that with the two pietros the fact one of them is from this universe the other is from the other yes that's true yeah who knows i guess i guess we'll see i i i have faith they'll be able to do it in an interesting way that we'll yeah like, you know all right um uh final thoughts any theories well again i think it's just like that whole thing about mephisto that was like my big theory for next episode though um yeah. it is the 80s episode so i think we will see more of like the kids like and maybe their powers like manifesting and just like growing or maybe like we sort of accidentally saw what you were reading maybe the powers go a little bit <laughs> eh, yep. eh, like the powers aren't really like not working but maybe they are they'll... out of control i mean like the fact that they're kids as well is like i think mm. they'll they'll it's like especially like this past episode i reckon like they're definitely going to do that sort of story of like oh yeah the kids are growing up but the kids have got powers they're like sort of like just as powerful as you know as wonder yeah or wonder and pietro yeah i should say but then and then like sort of i mean like we've already seen like um vision is like a struggling dad for this mm. episode and like get to see that turn up to 11 of him trying to keep a handle <laughs> on those two kids on both of them yeah but, yeah i reckon they'll i reckon they'll definitely do that that'll be the sort of story they'll do there mm. um i think i think the, the the next episode i reckon we'll get our first like big extended sequence of like outside of the um outside of westview i hope so uh, yeah i reckon that's when we'll probably get to see darcy and jimmy and you know mm. and the others are out there because like it's like you know um geraldine's been thrown out and like or yeah geraldine monica you know monica i guess see um her sort of like reporting back about everything and um because i think yeah it was um there's a thing um when they had the recap at the start of the episode there's a thing mitch pointed out that i saw like i hadn't realized at first the bit when when wanda meets geraldine in the second in the second episode she says i'm uh i'm and it's only when she shakes hands with wanda geraldine geraldine i'm geraldine oh yeah like, as if like yeah she 
comes in. Just here thinking about like, it, yeah. Um, Geraldine, that's my name, you know, because Wanda signed a name to her or something. It's like, mm. it's sort of like, she's like, she's in here, but her identity and her role in this world's like, yeah, by Wanda. By almost. Wanda, yeah. Yeah, I reckon it's sort of definitely, I like the in sort of seeing everything is like get really much more serious and much more so sort of like leaning into like the sort of real world stuff when the kids came along that really so like bodes well for some like for some of my theories about like this is sort of something like this is all to do with them and this is sort of like they're the they're the thing that this is all kind of hinging around mm, of, yeah uh, you know, whatever's going to be happening with them but yeah yeah um, i guess we'll see more next week thank you everybody for joining hope you guys enjoyed the video and for the children for the children Oh. <laughs> Bye, everyone.